for the first few years, even before the, the, the name Evlo existed, we had the mission to build custom-made product for the grid. So we started to resolve the grid challenges of tomorrow, years before. So I think that the way they are integrated, the way it's, it's uh, state-owned, they had the ability to build that uh, expertise before others. One of the things that makes our transition to a robust renewable energy grid possible is our ability to absorb renewable energy at a time when we can't yep. use it. Batteries are the key to our success there. And today we're going to talk with one of the leading battery manufacturers and the guy who is leading the charge in the sales department over at Evlo. For those who are unfamiliar, Evlo has a deep history and tradition at a company called Hydro-Quebec. Our friends to the north are the largest renewable energy provider in North America, Hydro-Quebec. Given their vast quantities of uh, hydropower, given in, <laughs> born in the name, I'm joined by Martin Rayo. Martin leads the sales and business development for Evlo Energy Storage. Today, we're going to talk about how Evlo has was born from this deep heritage in research development and utility experience at Hydro Quebec. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nico, for having me here. You know, Martin, one thing that stands out for me as a, you know, someone who has been in the industry for 20 years, I can appreciate the decisions that we make in our career yep. that often can be very pivotal. They can change where we live. They can change uh, you know, how we interact with our families and our, our colleagues. You were a partner in a very well-respected engineering firm in Canada where you were in charge of renewables. You basically were the top person in this organization <laughs> leading the renewables division. It takes long time to achieve partner status in many of these engineering firms, yet you made a critical decision to step out of this essentially tenured position, like the equivalent of a tenured position at a, at a university, to step back into that of, a, of an entrepreneur, effectively, at a startup. What was it about the, uh, the pull of the battery sector in general and Evlo as a company that convinced you to leave this cush position and jump back into the startup world. I love the cush position. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me that. But in the, in the end, uh, you see the growth trajectory of the, of, of the storage. It's just phenomenal. And being in a firm where obviously renewables growing, we saw that like, storage was to be uh, booming. And uh, at one point in time, uh, I wanted to be much, much closer. I mean, if you, I'm an electrical engineer by trade, so... Storage is like the unicorn of, uh, mm -hmm. of electricity when uh, 20 years ago we were talking about it. So combine that plus a local aspect to the job uh, that was uh, offered at that point in time and the gross possibilities. So, to me, uh, it was something to be tried. And I guess uh, if we were to raise a, uh, ask a, like a homemade survey here, I think pivotal changes in career is uh, something that is, we need to embrace at one point. But Choosing renewables, choosing storage is definitely a, 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 a cushy choice in, in, some, in some ways, more today than it was before, but... Uh, Certainly. Yep. Don't and, you, it. And, you, and you chose Evlo, uh, I believe, because it is, <clears throat> it is being birthed out of a very stable business. I think that there's probably a lot of folks in our audience here in North America who maybe are unfamiliar with Hydro-Quebec. Talk a little bit about the legacy or the history. Give yep. us a history lesson, if you will, of Hydro-Quebec and its role in the Canadian energy sector. So uh, you made me do some homework, I guess. <laughs> uh, trying to compare hydro to a, a, a U.S. utility is, is a bit hard because uh, compared to a state-owned type of uh, yeah. fully integrated utility. So there's not too many. Imagine a, a Southern company, for example, full like state-owned. Yep. So it's massive. Uh, we talk about 200 terawatt hours of sales of electricity per year, wow. 40 uh, gigawatt of installed capacity, and 20,000 plus employees. So it's, it's a big thing. When, like uh, in Quebec, it's, hydro is definitely the big thing. So going and joining in the booming market, choosing a company that is that solid with that history was uh, really a no-brainer, Nico. And is there anything in particular that... Um that Hydro-Quebec from an infrastructure position brings to the, to the marketplace that you, as someone in Canada who kind of understands the lay of the land, felt gave you a whole lot of confidence in the techno technological advantage? Yep. The way they are fully integrated, if you, when, when we think about it and we take a step back, they totally are able to identify a need, like deep into their grid mm. and justify it. So for the first few years, even before the, the name Evlo existed, 
we had the mission to build custom-made pro product for the grid. So we start to, res to resolve the grid uh, challenges of tomorrow, right. years before. So I think that the way they are integrated, the way it's, it's uh, state-owned, they had the ability to build that uh, expertise before others. Uh, indeed. And, and indeed, Hydro-Quebec has a pretty deep research and development team. What are some of the initiatives that have spawned technology out of the research center? Well, it's, it's quite amazing. And we're fortunate enough to have our offices right on the campus. Yeah. So we're, every day we drive to work and it's uh, really the best environment you can dream of. And uh, well, the high voltage lab is one example where they test up to a million volt uh, equipment. And they invented the um, seven. Did you say a million volt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, well, it's massive building. You can, yeah. it's, it's bigger than this place for sure. Yep. Uh, but, uh, but they also invented like a 735 kV class. So yeah. they built stuff from the ground up for decades. Yep. So it was just making sense to build uh, other innovation along the way. Yeah, one of the innovations along the way that people probably don't realize is that Hydro-Quebec was one of the early pioneers developing and patenting the lithium iron phosphate, LFP yeah. batteries that we all kind of take for granted now as, yep. the, as the iron horse, like the lead horse in the race, as it were. It wasn't always that, that way. And I recall very well, uh, you know, the conversation around lithium ion, lithium iron, uh, around iron phosphate and different other chemistries. Um, in, the, in the late 90s and early 2000s, Hydro-Quebec was really instrumental in developing LFP as we, as we know it today. Could you talk about how that pedigree, that history of research and development LFP led to ultimately launching Evlo? Absolutely, and I have to say, I, I plead guilty as well. I didn't know all about that because it's not necessarily super public uh, about right. the, those research and those uh, 800 patents, for example. But really, the, the fact that they have developed and commercialized the LFP yeah. gave us, at the time, a leg up to select who's going to fabricate at that specific specification and performances. Yeah. So being able to fully understand the electrochemistry in it, yep. but putting into a ready to commercialize uh, product because we're no more R&D phase. We need to be commercializing stuff. Right. So, but using the deep knowledge was, uh, was really the way we, uh, we use the research lab uh, yeah. of Hydro. I think it's really important that you mentioned the, the term commercialize. I, 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 yep. mentioned, I said patent, but obviously LFP was patented at the University of Austin in the early 90s. And um, that commercialization process is one that is, uh, it leads to manufacturing. It's something we'll yep. also, uh, is, is off, often in the news today. But I wonder, after 20 plus years of that commercialization process, deciding how and where to manufacture the, the product, how did folks at headquarters in, at Hydro-Quebec actually know that it was the right time to spin this battery platform out as a standalone business? So, th and you're right to say it's just a specific point in time where the project justification were making sense. Yeah. The product were at the maturity stage where it was making sense to build the large scale. And they were identifying needs on their own grids as well and mm -hmm. uh, beyond uh, frontiers as well. So at that specific point, they said, well, no more R&D. Uh, build a, pro a product that is appealing for utilities and sell outside. So at that specific, 2020, we launched Evlo. Yeah. But the mission was really to go from an R&D stage to a fully commercialized uh, product. So it happened at that specific moment. Well, as a best company born out of a utility, you have the yep. advantage of primary research being the fact that your number one customer, your most important customer is in fact your parent company. Could you talk about, and you mentioned your, your company offices are right there on the, on the, in the headquarters uh, facility. Talk about that proximity to your top customer and the impact on product development that it has. So the, the impact on product development is, uh, is phenomenal in a way that you know, utilities are more conservative in many aspects. So the bringing the, the de-risking mindset, the uh, expertise and technical, uh, yeah, technical expertise mindset is, is a different ball game in an industry where well, it's a lot of putting batteries in boxes. It's mm -hmm. a lot of a pure commercial play. But in the end, we're trying to solve like a, a, a very difficult equation, the energy transition. Yeah. So you need to mo know more about what's the end result. End result is decarbonizing a grid and making sure that storage is really uh, leveraging all of its uh, attributes uh, to the mix. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that one of the keys to success for you all is, in fact, this not just having uh, a utility as your parent company, but being incubated inside the utility, being yeah. on the campus and be able to reach across the aisle, as it were, and interact, ask these critical questions around product development so that you can iterate 
quickly, what do your customers see as the advantages born from that pairing and how, it's, how is that communicated to the marketplace? So there's one common element I see in customers today trying to build projects. Well, the, the, the products themselves are evolving. I mean, obviously, density is one metric. There's many others. But in the end, they need to uh, keep up with their team, with the fast-paced technology evolving. We need to take this, uh, this fast pace. They need to connect it to a grid uh, re and equals reliability in the end. So really what we bring, uh, at probably what speaks the most out of, of a utility speaking to another mm. is connecting fast evolving technology, de-risking it mm. with our skills and putting it to market. So it's going to work. Right. So that specific element is, uh, is really unique at, the, at this point. Yeah. One of the things that utilities have to um, sort of require and, and, and prioritize ahead of all other things is safety. Yeah. And I would imagine that safety is, in fact, paramount for Evolo as well, being that you get, you get this, first, uh, this first-hand experience. How has that increased the overall sort of reliability or safety factor of, a ba of the battery as a product? Well, uh, I'm not sure who, who's really knee-deep in the storage and on the floor today, but uh, really the, how fast those standards are evolving on safety mm -hmm. is just crazy. Again, th these standards are table state. Mm -hmm. Today, you need to go to the market with a solution. It has yep. to be certified, UL9540, name it. I mean, uh, there's a whole yeah. list. So the, uh, I think the expectation in the industry for everybody, not, like even if you're born out of a utility or not, is, is there. Having that extra uh, care about, uh, let's say, how to integrate and that the, the, the depth to which we go to de-risk, yeah. uh, not only the product, but the project, mm is probably making the difference uh, in the eyes of many. Well, let's talk a bit about the, um, the different points of entry yeah. uh, for complexity in these projects. Obviously, it requires many different electronic assets from PLCs to real-time device servers, computers, switch firewalls. Um, every grid-connected device in a storage unit represents a potential entry for cyber threats. How do you handle that? So the, uh, the way we handle it is uh, you talked about our campus, and uh, we call it the test line. I mean, we'll, uh -huh. we'll find a better name, uh, I promise. Uh, <laughs> and Marie, take note, we'll, we'll do better. But the, the test line is really a real size site that we have on mm -hmm. a real grid. Mm -hmm. And we cannot disturb anybody. I mean, uh, we cannot cause an outage or anything. But we are testing real-life equipment with mm -hmm. real scenarios. So in the end... Uh, cybersecurity is also something we're going to test. So yep. we, we're bringing the full real-life uh, equipment that would be installed to a site, and we do a penetration test, for example. Yeah. We're going to do uh, assessments right in our yard before shipping it to the site. So it, it's all about anticipation. I'm sure if you ask the IPPs on the floor today, a schedule is critical in, uh, like in every case. Yeah. Putting cybersecurity in a box later at commissioning it's, uh, we all know it's, uh, it's not the right way to do. So yep. we bring these topics way up front. We de-risk it uh, on our test line, and we bring customer. Uh, you, you mentioned de-risking. So along the way uh, as well, to be able to test and, and quickly iterate, there's a lot of, uh, of manufacturing components that go into it. Uh, obviously, domestic manufacturing is a topic du jour. Could you talk a bit about that critical path issue as it relates to Evlo and how you are de-risking that pathway for your customers? So we de-risk the pathway in, in, in um, I'd say de-risking the, the pathways for, uh, with, the, with our customers is, is transparency. A lot of what we do is uh, being super transparent with the customers and bringing them, again, I'm repeating myself on that mm -hmm. one, but the bringing them on site, having or offering them the possibility to touch mm -hmm. the equipment, testing it, seeing what's behind those mm -hmm. sometimes black box, we hear it in the, in the market, is, uh, is our way to, uh, to, to be able to solve that, um, that issue that we see in the, mar in the market today. Yep, and uh, I understand that a number of your components are in fact manufactured right in Canada and here in the United States. We have a strong component, and you know what, it's uh, domestic content is a table stake today. So, I mean, we, it's writings on the wall, it's, 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 it's known, it's being uh, now a criteria for selection. Right. So there's no way to avoid it. So we, we were pioneering in, in having a strong content and we want to mm -hmm. keep that position as a, as a leader to be uh, having that strong uh, domestic content everywhere we go. So yeah. it applies to Canadian project, US project, but also overseas. Yeah. Well, the DNA of any utility business is one that 
is conservative by nature. It's also uh, focused on resource efficiency. Uh, I'd love to hear some real, real life examples of the BEZ integration and how it increases efficiency and does reduce those project risks that you pointed out. What are some of the aspects of that DNA that contribute to the yeah. overall product development? So there, there's a few aspects. So uh, if we start in the, from the journey of a, the beginning of a project, the first thing you're going to probably do, uh, and I think uh, the, the colleague right before here uh, mm -hmm. at NERC, I mean, it has to do with application, mm -hmm. queuing. Uh, but we do the extra mile, uh, and we have a full set of, uh, of hardware in the loop type of testing. So we, mm -hmm. we, we provide the assistance to the customer to uh, help their grid connection with having advanced uh, model, uh, validated model provided to them, working with them to have the right application. So the last thing you, you want to do is to be stuck in the queue somewhere for five years and uh, having to stick with one, uh, one set of data and not being able to refresh it. So we, we go and we spend more time and effort mm -hmm. in modeling. So the modeling side of it is really a bit of a di differentiator. And after that, testing it on the test line, but also, um, also going to site and, and having a more thorough uh, testing protocol. So the DNA side of thing is the way we've been doing projects, even for Hydro Quebec. Like uh, we didn't have it uh, necessarily easy. Uh, we have to we had to go the extra mile and prove and demonstrate that the, our process was uh, was thorough and detailed. So a, a bit of the feeling of of coming to a supplier that is yes supplying uh, hardware and software pieces, but that uh, that was tested to their needs. And that's going to be, uh, I guess, well accepted and integrated into the real life uh, grid in the end. So even if it's an IPP, in the end, they're going to sell electron to a utility. It's, it's just a fact. So yeah. uh, having that, uh, that full, uh, full way of uh, assessing the, uh, the, the grid and the DNA of the utility be, uh, without being one. So you, you, your question was a bit about the, the nimbleness. Mm -hmm. So we're nimble. We're separate, even if we're owned by one. But that give us a speed, in, a speed to react, speed to act, and uh, bring the best product possible to the market. Yeah, and I see that as one of the key advantages of being able to spin out of the utility. Is in fact, utilities are not known for being nimble. They're not known for being uh, 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 hyper, hyper proactive. Uh, one of the things that um, is evident is that Hydro Quebec is proactive in their research and development, and the ability to see the opportunity when it presents itself and spin the battery company out is um, you know it is it is part of the innovative. Yep. cycle of uh, of what where we're at in the industry. Martin, thank you for taking the time to thank be you here so and much. explain a little bit more about your product. Bye-bye.